Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another day of your life. Today is a great day because, like my last episode, we're going to do a commentary. And the important part about this commentary is that it's a continuation virtually of my last episode. Um, in my last episode, I mentioned that it took three hours to do what I did in the last episode and edit it down, and this is the continuation of that. I didn't stop playing. I actually ended up going on for three more hours and decided to finish the roof. I had got the ceiling up, and I was just so probably somewhat excited and happy that it was finally getting done that I thought, well, let's just finish the whole darn thing. So I went and harvested a lot of wood, made a lot of steps, and started uh, basically forming the roof. And I left slots on the corners uh, where the dirt blocks are. I know the screen is probably going by pretty quick. I put it on basically a 300% speed increase or something like that. But wherever the dirt blocks were, I'm going to be putting in glowstone. Uh, so that it lights up the roof and it's not so dark up there that mobs spawn and stuff and fall off, etc. So that was a great, great, great intro. As you can see here, I start to uh, build the floor. Now, when I had started doing this, I didn't know that lava can catch fire to things that are within, uh, I think it's three blocks distance from it. I'm not sure if it's a diagonal block up and left or up and right that accounts for one block as well, but I know from what I could understand it's three up and three to the sides. Uh, any block in there that can catch fire will. For example, wool, wood, etc. Stuff like that. So I had to change my design a couple times because my place caught on fire a few times, which was quite frustrating. And I basically lifted the floor at least I think three blocks off of the lava so that there would be no uh, I could have certainty that my floor wouldn't catch on fire and I had to change the wood paneling around the four posts of the of where the lava is to basically be three blocks away and I ended up using stone to do that you'll see that a little bit further in the video here so I need a lot of wool and I went and got certain colors because the fire had destroyed some, so I had to go back and get like red wool and stuff like that and, and all that joy. Now, I didn't want to use a ladder system like I had used mostly before, ladders and stairs and stuff like that to get up here. I end up using a water elevator. Um, I've seen it on numerous shows numerous channels. Basically you use signs and water to create a way to swim up or drop down without injury. So that's what I used in the middle of this room. I dug out a kind of a 4x4 four four right in the middle of where the lava is coming up and you can kind of see that pillar there. And I build up a water elevator, let's call it that, to get up and down. Always trying something new, you know? It's always nice to expand and do something new it's uh, it's easy to be really simple in Minecraft and for the most part the stuff I do is simple but as I develop my let's play world and we get ourselves established I think then we can focus more on complex builds using redstone automating things more so than than what I do have them I think the only thing I have automated right now really is my wheat farm so I definitely want to improve that as I go and, and get some pretty creative. And I know there's a lot of creative people on YouTube who already have a lot of really great redstone builds, so instead of reinventing the wheel, I'll probably copy uh, what they did and adapt them for my needs, but I'll make sure that if I, if I use some of their creative endeavors or projects that I'll, I'll mention them as they come. I've already mentioned that uh, I've used ethos design and he inspires me quite a bit to for some of my builds so I enjoy that so here you can see that I uh, built my little checkered down and up to the what's going to become my nether portal world 
Obsidian Portal is going to be up there. And I built my up-down water elevator for that. And now I'm building kind of the landing pad and the up-down water elevator to get down into my mine shaft. So that's what I'm doing here. Now as I build that, instead of telling you what I'm doing as I'm doing it, I'd like to talk to you about Spellbound Caves today. I had been playing Legendary. Uh, probably picked it up about a week or two into Etho started posting it. I'd never really heard of uh, Vex Maps uh, before until I had been following Etho and I saw him playing Legendary and I thought that is just looks like too much fun. So I ended up playing Legendary kind of alongside of him uh, at the same, in the, at least at the same time frame. I ended up finishing him a little bit earlier than him, but that I mean, that's of course because he's doing the editing and all the videos and I'm just playing straight up. But I really enjoy the series and so I had heard that Spellbound Caves had just come, kind of come out around that time that I started playing Legendary and at the time I wasn't sure if I was going to do a series on it, but uh, knowing how much fun I had doing it and all that kind of stuff, I definitely wanted to do some gameplay. So you will see a link at the end of my uh, shows here that uh, basically an annotation link in the final kind of captions or rolling credits of the end there where you'll see links to Star Battle. Eventually we'll be having I Am Alive on there and Spellbound Caves. So if you're interested in checking those out, please do. It's really fun. You should definitely download the maps. I think I put the links in my description of those videos for Vex's channel. And it's pretty easy to find if you just Google Vex uh, Spellbound Caves. It'll bring you to the download site Torrent File Mediafire, Media Fire, I think is the site, if I'm not mistaken. In any case, you can get that there. And definitely play. Uh, I know that, uh, again, Etho, uh, B00, and Good have started a spellbound series and I caught one of the early videos and it's hilarious those guys are just freaking hilarious if you stumble on this channel and you have not heard of them which I would doubt then please check out Etho spellbound caves with good B double O they call it Ooge O O G E it's quite hilarious I stopped watching them because I didn't want to get any spoilers and I uh, I'm waiting until I finish my series before I go back and watch theirs but I can guarantee you'll have a good time if you go and check them out, so please do that. What else is going on today? Well, as you can see here, I am <laughs> putting in the stone brick uh, in where I had some of the wood steps because of the fires that were being caused. And you can see the dirt in the background where it's the template of where my portal will go. Uh, I was really surprised actually by how how easily things can catch on fire if you aren't paying attention and stuff like that. I probably, embarrassingly enough, I probably had hmm, two, no, probably like four or five times instances where fire had caught onto the, my roof in my building. It was so frustrating uh, and, and caused me great panic. <laughs> so here I'm taking down my portal. I'm going to be placing it up in my portal room there. I uh, decided that I wanted to not have it outside of my main house. I kind of wanted to have it locally uh, s located centrally in my house, which is why I put it in the upstairs roof there because I don't know what else I would put up there. I guess I could put up enchanting room or something like that, but it's kind of limited for space and and any kind of redstone me mechanism building in there so I decided I'll just simply put in the portal. Now something about the nether I didn't know that I also learned during these six hours of playing is portals are unique in the fact that they are linked but not always the way you might think. Now this isn't a comprehensive tutorial on how portals work, but you'll notice when I eventually light this portal and place it that essentially I land up in the nether where I had been before out of my original nether portal, the other side of the coin I guess you want to call it. So after arriving there I thought well, I hated the initially I hated it. I hated the platform. It wasn't connected to anything. It was really out in the open. I didn't really want to build a building there and then 
work on it from there. I wanted to move it. And in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done that without a little bit more understanding about how portals work because when you move portals, you can, depending on how they're located and where you put a new portal or something like that, you can disconnect the link. And so when I end up going back through the portal, I kind of end up having to make the game recreate another portal on the let's call it my earth world side and it's not uh, basically I don't come back out in my portal room I come back out somewhere else it auto automatically generates a new portal now the rules about the linking in the portals and all that kind of stuff they're pretty specific and like I said this is going to be a comprehensive tutorial but essentially you can do portal jumping you can you can there, there's a, there, there will be a time you'll see <laughs> when I'm messing around with portals and trying to link them to one another that I end up over 3,000 blocks away from here. <laughs> and, uh, and I end up dying because uh, I end up actually in a ravine at the end of one ravine. I pop up there and I, well, okay, I'll just dig right up. And of course, kind of in a not thinking panic mode of where am I? Why am I so far away? I, you know, I wasn't focused, and I allowed gravel. I was confined in a in a basically one block space going up, and gravel fell on me and killed me with my diamond pick. And I was right, right mad, right angry, right pissed. And so what ended up happening is I got a bunch of stuff together, materials. And I went back to find this th second or third portal I had placed in the nether. And I end up popping out at this 3,000 block away location again. This is quite some time later, like hours later, by the time I bothered to go back because I thought, well, it's too late after a couple minutes. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get back there quickly. And I thought all my stuff was gone. So I kind of gave up the idea of ever getting my diamond pick back, which is unfortunate because of my first one. I have fond memories of that, you know, it's barely even used, really. So I end up there and I, I bring wood with me this time, or I f end up finding wood because there's a mine shaft in this uh, portal or in the ravine area, and I make a boat, and I go up and I find out that I am in the middle of the ocean. I'm talking about, like, in the middle of nowhere. This is the moment, actually. I come back through the main nether portal and I am confused and I'm like thinking to myself what what the heck is going on like I have no clue that portals can do this and so I have very little torches I have no food left this is one of my you know the great moments where I don't pack enough food with me or I wait till like the bitter end oh I better turn back because I got no supplies and this is what ends up happening I end up somewhere I don't know where the heck I am and I have no food I have barely any torches I don't know how deep I am. This is, I think, when I check my location, trying to figure it out. You know, and times times against me here. And uh, this is what instigates my research into portals and how they become linked and stuff like that, because this is the one that was automatically generated for me to come out. Uh, so be careful when you mess with portals. Be careful. Make sure you do your research. If you're going to change locations, there's certain ways to do it. So I come out basically at the top here, uh, underneath sand, a sand area, sandstone and sand and stuff like that. And I'm actually not too far away from my original spawning point, which is interesting to me because the fact, I mean, when you look at the rules, depending on, it's, I think it's 128 by 128 block, if it can't find your uh, nether portal, it will generate the new one, something like that. And so when I come out here and I look around, at first I'm a little bit disoriented, but I'm actually really close to where I spawn from and where I've been building my house. And so it's a little bit ironic to me that that's the case. So I head back here and I do my research and I kind of find out what's going on, but this gives you a chance to kind of maybe look into it uh, yourself if you're going to change portal locations around and stuff like that. Uh, it's not as simple as you think. Uh, you know, in the, in the nether, every 10 blocks you walk is considered I think one in the world 
So if you walk 300 blocks in the nether and place a new portal, you're actually going like 900 blocks in the world, which is why I ended up at some point uh, ending up 3,000 blocks away from my home. So here I am just finishing the lighting. I hope you had a good time watching this, and I hope you enjoy the commentary. I hope you have a great day, and enjoy your Minecraft. Take care.